Hi, what do you think about the sash? For what? Over your shirt? Yeah. Abby's all, you know. <laughs> 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 Looks like your interview. Seems like your interview. Should I be interviewing you? No, 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 I'm gonna interview you. Hello, Awakening Blueprint Tribe. I, Awakening Blueprint Tribe. Yes, that's, that's, that's the name of the tribe. And uh, we are here with my good, good friend, Mr. Abhi Dugo. Namaste. Namaste. We came all the way to India during the virus, as you can tell from the shawl that I'm wearing. He wanted to come all the way. And then I used my power to just show up in America. He like shape-shifted, <laughs> and now he's here. Now, I really, in all seriousness, I want to... Uh, take an opportunity. We have such a great opportunity to to share and get wisdom from you. And we've been talking about the mind this week. And I gave them a little meditation technique. We use Soham, oh, the yeah, mantra. Soham. Yeah. yeah. So they've been doing that for the last uh, two weeks. And Abhi's from India. And yeah. A brilliant yoga and meditation teacher. I mean, but you know, I talk about satsang sometimes. Uh, basically, you were born in satsang. Yeah, so I got dragged in satsang when I was six, seven years old. I never wanted to go, and my parents were uh, going, so I had no choice. So that's how I started going to satsang until I got, you know, the acquired taste. Yeah. So this was an acquired taste for me. Over time, I started understanding the concepts of the spirituality, what they talk about, and stories. And in these stories were revealed the uh, best secrets and yeah i got hooked yeah awesome so what wisdom you know i know we talk about mine you you and i have done techniques together yeah uh you know we've been talking about the illusion a little bit you know maya yeah we didn't say maya when we talk about the hologram or the dream in a course of miracles in india you call it maya maya yeah yeah, yeah. so maya is a, a word in sanskrit and what it really means is illusion but if you really go in Sanskrit language, go deep into it, you'll see that the roots of the words describe a whole big story. Like these are called archetypes. Mm. When you have Cinderella, if I say Cinderella to you, a certain image comes to your mind, a certain story comes to your mind, you understand the whole story when yeah. I say Cinderella. Yeah. So there's a lot of knowledge packed into one word. And that's what these mantras and uh, Sanskrit words mostly have and maya is described as ma and ya two root words ya means who and ma means not so who's not so she is not so it basically talks about the holographic reality hologram reality in those terms that it's not really there but it appears to be as this world around us and our senses play an accomplice in creating this reality for us. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, my teacher, when I was in India, uh, his teacher, I've been sharing some quotes with them because the course is that East meets West and uh, uh, Nizargadatta Maharaj, you've yeah. heard me talk about it. He, yeah, of course. He, had, he would say that, he said, I, I've come to the conclusion mm -hmm. that consciousness and everything in it is one big gigantic fraud. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fraud. It's, it's an appearance. It's a... We think this is real, and then when we go in dreams, we think that is real, and then when we wake up, we realize that everything was unreal. Well, and we're gonna go further into that. You know, uh, we have one week where we'll talk about God, where we'll talk about what's beyond. We've been hinting at it, but share whatever you'd like, yeah. Yeah, sure. So, the concept of mind in India has been described with 84 different functions. In Vedas, they went really deep into it. And um, I mean, think about the complexity of a human mind. Yeah. You cannot just describe it with one word called mind. Yeah. That's the limitation, I would say, of English language in terms of understanding these. But now there are so many uh, quantum physics and all these uh, theories coming about, which is explaining more and more. But it's hinting to the same aspect what was talked about three to 5,000 years ago. And they talked about our four parts, we'll talk about main four parts. First is the ahankara. Ahankara is our ego. That's why this maya around you is so real because of our ego. Because ego creates a little relativity in this 
world so we can decipher, we can have an experience. So, <clears throat> second part is called Chitta. Chitta is all the memories of the past, not just mine, individual mind, but conscious, collective mm -hmm. mind. So then comes the intellect, which is kind of like my part, which makes me individual. So let's think about the conscious, collective conscious created a contract with the individual mind. Chitta created a contract with the um, buddhi and um, and intellect. Yep, yeah, buddhi yeah. is intellect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So intellect that hey, go have that experience, and whenever you have that experience, bring back all the knowledge and merge it to me. Mm. So the consciousness is getting smarter and smarter and seeing all these different perspectives on what works and what doesn't and getting so that's that's who we really are that awareness of chitta but in this life we think that we are this body and we are this mind and that creates the game of life for us mm. uh, and then comes the mana is the conscious mind which is um, which is basically getting fed by our senses five senses bringing information to the mind and mana, and mana changes his mind. So if I go to a chocolate store, there's hundreds of chocolates, my mana becomes a little um, indecisive. So, because there's so many choices. So that's the, the fickle part of the mind, if you'd say. Um, and buddhi, the intellect, is there to watch over and filter the things coming through. So we can live the life the way we are designed to live by discriminating mm. what's real from what's unreal. In A Course in Miracles, it talks about it like the, the buddhi, and maybe buddhi would be more of the connection to the universal mind. So A Course in Miracles talks about there's the mind of God yeah. that then extends out into our individual minds. Yeah. And then we are private thoughts and we filter life through it. Sure. And it's really about bringing this individual mind or recognizing the connection to the divine mind. Yeah. And then live it, letting that live through us. Yeah, so I have a really good example which would basically, you guys would, I hope, relate to that and it would help you remember what is what because it's easy to get lost in who I, who we are who we really are so back in the day they used to use chariots in the wars and so chariots were pulled by horses and imagine a scenario where you see a chariot getting pulled by five horses and there's a charioteer and there's a rein which is attached to the horses mm. and then the chariot itself and then there's a guy sitting in the back so think about Krishna and Arjuna. Yeah, yeah. Krishna is driving it. Arjuna is sitting in the back. So he's the real master sitting in the back, enjoying the ride and telling the charioteer where to go. So that's where the uh, distinction comes in that the chariot itself is our body we have been given. Now the reins the charioteer is pulling on is our mind. It's our mana and the mana is attached to the horses who are the senses, five senses, bringing our information. If you don't control those horses, if you don't tell the horses where to go, they're going to just go wherever the sense perception, the enjoyment takes them. Wherever they get pulled, they'll go in any direction they want to. Now the reins are the mind and then the charioteer who's sitting is the buddhi, intellect, who is really deciding where to go. But the whole thing is mind. And the guy who's sitting, he's unaware that he is the master. So that's where the joke comes in, the irony comes in, that we don't, we don't, we're not aware that we are in the back of the chariot, supposed to give orders. That's why mind takes this onus responsibility and becomes the master and you don't want your mind to be your master yeah yes yeah. a terrible great servant terrible master exactly yeah. great yeah. servant and terrible master so yeah so whenever you want to think about the mind and who you are think from that perspective bring that story back in your mind um well <laughs> in your mind yeah so um yeah it would help you 
really see yourself from who you are and there's so many stories um, yeah. I've talked about in the channel so yeah if you want to listen to it more there's a lot of stories and examples from India and yeah. growing up great great yeah. and uh, you know we've been talking a lot about some practices and they've got some great practices meditation practice uh, prayer we, we've been introducing that into I know you and I have done some pranayama together and, and the, the control of the breath also impacts the mind. What, what maybe mm. is a, a, a couple processes or even tidbits that they sure. can take away that you'd recommend in, yeah. terms of, uh, in terms of something that they can apply? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so just uh, there's different kinds of yogas which we talk about all the time, jnana yoga. Yeah. So this is from the jnana yoga's perspective, but you want to bring that jnana the knowledge into your body through these practices so the one technique is to become just become aware and this is called swara yoga just become aware that you are breathing you have breathing 21,600 times in a day and the sound of your breath inhales and exhale is the mantra so hum which you've been teaching yeah. them yeah that is your doorway not just into the different levels of existence we have but into your subconscious mind and you can rewrite your story you can rewrite the way your mind is conditioned right now and i'll tell you your body is nothing but a conditioned mind so the way we see our body is how we are conditioned not just our bodies but everybody uh, we see is our conditioned mind so in this technique you want to bring awareness to your body with your breath so as you breathe in you become aware how deep the breath is if it's touching all the way to your chest then in yoga we call it this is you are in your earth element um, the, this picture right there is called tatwas elements five elements we are made of on this earth and look up google uh, tatwa knowledge so you want to become aware, just do this exercise. If you're breathing all the way to your chest, you're in your earth element, you feel grounded. And if you're not feeling grounded, if you want to feel grounded, you can come back to this. Water element, when you're breathing all the way here. And then fire element, when you're breathing up to your neck, which means you have energy, you're saving, conserving your energy to put something in like creative aspects of who you are. And then when your breath gets slower and slower, you, want, you don't want to do anything worldly. You want to sit down and meditate, contemplate, journal. So that's a really cool technique to just simply bring awareness to your breath. But go a little bit deeper and slowly, hopefully, out of 2,000, 21,600 breaths, you'll be aware of 1,000 breaths mm, in a, great. throughout the day. The breath, it's so key. We're going to do a process with them. Where we do, we're gonna do a breath session with Lori. Yeah. So uh, like a rebirth breathing. Uh, Beautiful. Uh, of, online, and you know it, the the breath is so important too because as you connect with it, mm -hmm. it there's I mean, if you stop whatever's happening, and you connect to the breath, even taking some deep breaths in, mm -hmm. bringing it up or even higher, and breathing and 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 modulating the breath. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's everything. It really is. In Vedas, they say breath is the thread that connects your body to your prana. Mm. Prana is who you really are or consciousness. It ties your consciousness to your body. Mm. And when you don't breathe anymore, the consciousness thread is lost and the soul just takes freedom. But think about breath in a way that it takes you into the sound aspect of the existence because you're hearing the breath come in hearing the breath come out and you're doing this mantra soham 21,600 times a day without knowing it but when you become conscious and you start hearing the sound inside nada then things start changing and uh, miracles start happening like you say in the Course in Miracles yeah you get connected to those miracles more yeah so that's a little technique for everyone. One of the things I like to do too is uh, uh, when I do f uh, free diving, and you and I have talked about this too, doing breath holds. I mean, I could get up to about holding my breath for 
a little over three minutes, you know, yeah. underwater, and it's some of the best meditations because you're yeah. you're you're so focused on it. When you bring that awareness to, and I, I shared a quote from Neem Karoli Baba, mm-hmm. Ram Dass's guru. He said, he said, the one pointedness of the mind. When you bring your mind to one point on the breath. Mm-hmm. Anywhere you could bring your mind and immerse it into one point, you'll know God. You get a glimpse of God in that space. So the yeah. breath is an amazing place to bring that one pointedness to, and and really the mantra, you know, bringing the mantra into there and releasing any yeah. disturbances in the mind. And yeah, great. That's so there's a lot of deeper aspects of the mind, but breath can really take you there. Yeah. And through the breath, you can connect to the sound, which is ultimately going to guide you into deeper and deeper existence which we really can't understand because we have to go beyond the mind so that could be our aim to go beyond the mind using meditation or a course in miracles or using any techniques however we can suspend the mind for time to time go in our contemplation meditation to yeah. that always Great. And then I know you have your YouTube channel. Yes. Meditate with Abhi. Great, great videos on there. So some more resources for everyone. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. so it's Meditate with Abhi. started around a year ago and it's been really doing good. So thank you to all you. Maybe somebody's already watching the channel. But uh, yeah, see, connect with me over there and we'll go a little bit deeper into the Indian philosophies and stories because I think stories are the best way to decipher un- decipher this reality, the Maya, and shatter it, and go beyond the mind. Yeah, great. This is awesome. So we have East meets West. You see? Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah, you remember New course. Jersey and yeah. Delhi? New it's Jersey, a, Delhi. Uh, it's, we're like a Jersey Delhi. I'm from Jersey. He's from Delhi. A sandwich shop. So, a sandwich shop where we wear cool shawls. And we sell enlightened sandwiches. <laughs> 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 and make sure with all your practices that you're laughing and having fun and uh, don't take the mind so serious yeah you know remember where you are in the chariot yeah you're the one directing the show and yeah. as the Course in Miracles says you're the choice you're the decision maker so you get to decide yeah where the mind goes and what you give attention to yeah I want to say something you reminded yeah. me of something you said don't take the mind so seriously yeah being truthful to your mind is being untruthful to who you really are. So think mm. about that. Yes. That's the, which brings us back. It's a big fraud. <laughs> it's a big <laughs> Maya. Maya. Let's so, play along yeah. our part in Maya. Yeah. And see how we want to affect the holographic reality we are in. Yeah. Much love, everyone. I'll see you all. Thank you, Avi. Always Thank great you. being together. Yeah. And, uh, We always, we have talks like this all the time. So much love everyone. We'll see you soon. See you.